Hello and welcome to the Alpman and we're going to be doing part two of my Fed Q&A. So we're going to start with Paper Cut Park 101 and his first question is what is your opinion on Dream Theatre's images and words album? Well I think it's amazing, I mean how could I say otherwise? Dream Theatre are one of my favourite bands of all time but I do think Metropolis Part 2 is easily the superior album but, I mean, Images and Words is definitely up there with their best and, yeah, fantastic, monumental, um, you know, progressive metal album. Bands that have never disappointed you. I found this a really tough one, as most bands have disappointed me in a way by, you know, releasing some dud in their career. I mean, you know, Guns N' Roses, amazing, 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 then Chinese Democracy comes along. You know, Metallica, really good. You know, uh, all right. You know, pass. You know, decent on the lowdowns, and then Saint Anger comes along. So you know, it, it's tough. It, it, it's a tough one. Most bands have disappointed me at least a bit. You know, Muse, absolutely amazing. Then Second Law and Resistance comes along. But I thought of a few. Leonard Skinner have to be one. Um, and let's just pretend the Christmas album doesn't exist. And pretending that doesn't exist, then. <laughs> They, because I, I just can't even count that, then they don't really disappoint. They always release just consistent, consistent albums from the classic days with Pronounced and um, uh, the album after Pronounced with Sweet Home on it, you know, the live stuff, then even the stuff, you know, post-crash, like 1991, God and Guns, Last of Dying Breed, you know, things like that. They're just really solid albums. And enough of Southern Rock bands, actually, that doesn't disappoint. ZZ Top, even their weaker material and, you know, weaker albums, they, they still just have such a groove going through them that you just can't help but like it. I mean, their first album, for example. Is their first album really one of their best? No. But it has a damn good groove going through it, and you just get swept to wear the groove, yeah, you enjoy it. Also another, I'd say Dio is a general artist, pretty much everything from Elf's Carolina County Ball to Heaven and Hell's The Devil You Know. I haven't found a Dio album yet that I've been disappointed with because, you know, he doesn't, not the most experimental of artists, but, you know, so what? And in general, I would say also, say Magnum don't really disappoint. Um, they just release so solid amp after solid amp, especially recently they should be going amazingly. Though the visitation in 2011, it was decent, but it wasn't half as good as the moon, uh, Into the Valley of the Moon King, or on the 13th day, or even Princess Alice or Brand New Morning. Um, but still, they, they always release solid, but you know what you're getting. It tends to be bands, I suppose, that don't disappoint, just the ones, they don't necessarily experiment, but you know what you're getting. You just, you know, I think that's okay. You know, if every band was like that, yeah, it'd get dull. You need your experimental bands that just, you know, go everywhere. You know, your radio heads and whatever. You never know what the hell they're going to put out next. But also, I don't think there's anything wrong with a band just being fairly safe. I mean, you know. Um, okay, bands you want to like but just can't. First one easily has to be Between the Buried and Me. Everyone goes on that one. Everyone. Well, not everyone, you know. Not everyone in the world. That would be, be an interesting world of Between the Buried and Me. We're the biggest bands, but... But they're not. You know, I respect the band anyway. Um, I like their guitar, their drums, bass, awesome. You know, sort of like dream theatery, epic progressive metal. So why don't I like the vocals? You know, not surprising, I was going to say, is I just hate the bloody vocals. For me, they just ruin it. All those growls and whatever. Ugh, just no. They, they ruin what could have been, what could have been pretty damn epic. So yeah, that's a shame. Um, another one, I suppose, Kiss, to an extent. I really don't particularly like Kiss. I like, like, the odd song, but don't really like them. I mean, they're a band, technically, I should. I mean, I like that type of 80s rock, but just don't like them. And the Rolling Stones, though, to a lesser extent. I mean, I do like, you know, some of the Stones, you know, their greatest hits or whatever. But really, there's just, you know, I don't exactly own any albums. I'm not in a rush to get any albums of the Stones. They just... I don't know, there's just something about them that has never captured me quite. Um, like other bands, I, I don't really know to be honest, but yeah, I just... Something about the Stones. Okay, what's some of your all-time favourite prog albums? Okay, Pink Floyd's The Wall and Dark Side of the Moon, Shocker, 
um, you know, also we could go into more fluid. Let's just, let's just stay, you know, minimum fluid. Camel's Mirage, Caravan's the Land of Green, Ping, Dream Theater's Metropolis Part 2, Genesis is the Lamb, Lies Down on Broadway, also probably um, Nursery Crime as well. Um, let's see, Yes, the Yes album, Close to the Edge. Maybe Brain Salad Surgery, to an extent there was an album, mm, it just has Carnival 9, which is amazing. Even Into the Valley of the Crimson King, which on Earth's Moonchild, otherwise it's decent. Now, it does, it, there's a lot of prog albums I like quite a bit, but those ones I said at first, from The Walls to like The Land, they're, they're probably my absolute favourites, yeah. I'm sure there's something I'm missing out, um, I don't know. Maybe Anathema's Weather System, so you count that as prog, but I, I'm not sure I would, to be honest. Okay, The Rocker 213. Are you familiar with a band called Budgie? No. I listened to a couple of their songs there and they seem pretty, pretty decent. Um, I sp especially like the song Bread Fan. That was a um, good song, good song. Do you prefer vinyl or CD? I have to say CD. I mean, I grew up on CDs. I hadn't even listened to a vinyl till just over a year ago to be honest. I mean it's close but CD it isn't as fragile, it doesn't get scratched as easily but the main advantage I can burn CDs really easily to my iPod and you know I do listen to my iPod but I never digitally download stuff as I've said very much before I have a pretty much a hundred percent physical collection the only digital stuff I have is review copies so like Queensryche's new album I have digitally, Firewinds and other Arcticas just you know random review copies I've got over the last, you know, year and however long I've been doing this YouTube thing. Um, yeah, so I'd say CD. Most of my collection. I have about 400 CDs, then 200 vinyl, so, you know, that sort of ratio. Are you a fan of 80s hard rock bands like Motley Crue and Rat? Yeah, I mean, I love 80s hard rock, and, you know, I, they, even though a lot of them had that certain sound to it, very much so, I mean, I was only saying on my Weekly Rock News, I was listening to it, um, you know, Hearts, Bad Animals, that's a late 80s sound. They all have that type of, you know, sound of it, overproduced, quite big sound, but I like that sound quite a bit. And especially bands like Motley Crue and like Cinderella and those type of hair metal bands are always, always been a bit of a sucker for good hair metal. I mean, Guns N' Roses, my favourite band of all time, and classic 80s rock band, so, you know, of course I'm going to like them. Okie dokie, um, Daniel Clark again, do you like System of a Down? Nope, not even slightly, I find them really obnoxious, their music far too abrasive and annoying, and I don't like Tarja Tsek, well, I can't say his name I'm afraid, but Tarja, whatever, I think he's called Tarja, I don't know, but that, that guy, no, he, he annoys me in many ways. Okay, Forever Trees Green. What is your top three Iron Maiden albums? Tough, and there's one album that everyone's going to say, why isn't that in there? I'll explain after. Number one, Number of the Beast. Need I say anymore? Number two, the debut Iron Maiden album. Just has such a raw energy, almost a punky sound, even though Steve Harris denies, and so does Paul Diane, it has any punk sound, but it bloody well. A great raw punk. So it just has such a raw sound. I just love that. I'm such energy. And a number three. No, it's not Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. It's a matter of life and death. I love absolute. Well, no. No, I don't know. Actually, I might say A Brave New World. One of those two. I absolutely love post reunion. Um, stuff so Brave New World, I adore Matter of Life and Death, I don't, don't know Dance of Death, I have to say, and I love Final Frontier, love those albums to death, I think they're some of the absolute best material. And I mean, like some of the songs, I think it's you know, really strong album, but I, I, I do think there's better in their discography, though I do love it, and I've always thought Power Slave was a bit of a weaker album, to be honest. Yeah, you know, that's just my opinion anyway. Okay, if you ever heard of a band called Grantly Buffalo, if not, check out their debut album Fuzzy. I have heard of them, have heard some of their stuff, not really my cup of tea, I'm afraid. What's your opinion on Michael Jackson, Nickelback and Coldplay? Well, Michael Jackson, I loathe that pedo as a person and a musician. That's not controversial in the slightest. Coldplay, I also hate, as they sound to me, like the most unimaginative, uninspired, failed, radiohead, copyish 
band were just so bloody dull with the sappiest, whiniest lyrics ever. So not called fun, but Nickelback. Yeah, they're, they're decent. Um, you know, I, I do like Nickelback. You know, everything up to and including all the right reasons is decent stuff. Especially all the right reasons. I still love that album. Great album. Dark Horse. Eh, here and now, bloody hell, that was bad. But I like Nickelback. One of the first concerts I've saw. Always been nostalgic for them. I can't help it. And finally, if you could change, I love this question. If you could change one thing in any album ever before it's finished mixing, what would it be? It can be something like an annoyance you've had with it, or something you feel is missing. Well, so I, I go, I go back in time, and basically I go into the studio where in 1988 or maybe 87. I don't know quite know when they recorded, but it was released in 88. And Metallica recording and Justice for All. And as Hetfield put his hand on that knob to turn the bass down, I'd slap him around the face, I'd say, not cool, bro, not cool. You leave that bass alone, or I am going to strike you down with great vengeance and furious anger. Yeah, so, basically to turn the bass up in, and justice for all, because that ah, needs more bass, and Jason Newstead is a good bassist. Okay, Rob W182. What is your favourite series of films? Lord of the Rings plus The Hobbit. I count them as one because they're all that type of thing. End of story. Love them to death. My favourite films. I count them really as one, you see. So I call them my favourite film of all time would be Lord of the Rings trilogy plus The Hobbit. I just count them as the same thing. I call it cheating, but I don't care. What is your favourite superhero movie? Simple. As it's a combination of one of my all-time favourite directors, Christopher Nolan, who did Memento, Memento, which I still think is his best work, not this film that I'm going to say. And then combine that with my favourite comic book character of Batman, and you have an amazing trilogy of, of course, The Dark Knight, having to be my favourite. Dark Knight Rises, I think it's underrated to the extent that people moan about that film, and say, oh, Bane sucks, oh, the ending sucks. This sucks, this sucks. Just take the film for what it is. It's got, I think, I like how Bane's portrayed. Yes, maybe they could have done slightly better, but I like the way Bane's portrayed. The only thing that I think is a little off is the the mask, to be honest. I think you should have had that full, sort of, gimp-like mask, because it's more amusing. But, uh, and he was a little small, you know, could have been just that bit bigger. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I love that trilogy to death. Okay. If you got to go back in time and join one band and write one album, it doesn't have to be the same artist, what slash who would it be? Mm. I said to join a band, I joined Motorhead, simply because after reading Lemmy's autobiography you know, a couple of years ago, they just sound like it'd be really fun. <laughs> it just sounds like it'd be such a fun band to be in. So, yeah, I, I think that'd be, that'd be cool, pretty cool. And an album, that's hard. I'm not going to go necessarily my favourite album. Go, you know, I'm just trying to think of an album that... Something I just find interesting, not in necessarily great sound of all time, but just saying it's particularly, I don't, I don't know, that I would like to have written, I suppose. What's the story Morning Glory by Oasis? Love that, and appreciate the songwriting that hugely. Um, then more obvious choices, like if ACDC's Back in Black, and Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. Okay, um... Pator69. Examples of albums you hated at first, but they grew on you, likewise with other bands. Well, album and band-wise, we're going to have to go for one of the bands I loathed with such a passion when I was younger, but now adore with uh, the same passion. Album-wise, and whatever, anyway, I've said that. Misplaced Childhood and Clutching at Straws by Marillion. I absolutely hated Fish Era Marillion. Absolutely loathed it. You see, they're my dad's favourite band, Marillion, and um, those two albums his favourite, so, you know, he used to play them to me, and I just bloody hated, I hated Fish's voice, just hated everything about those albums. But then, like, in the last couple of years, I listened to them again, and it was just, like, blew me away, it's just amazing. I mean, I just, now, I love those, especially Clutching Straws, just phenomenal. Um, Metallica, another band I didn't really like at first. I thought Enter Sandman was pretty crap, but now it's my favourite Metallica song on my favourite Metallica album. Yes, I'm a Black Album fan, shoot me. Um, also, ELO to an extent, actually. It's when I was pretty young, I heard Mr. Blue Sky, loved that song. So you know, I got um, an ELO Greatest Hits, which I still have, 
and um, I listened to it and I hated all the other tracks except for Mr. Blue Sky. I even hated Evil Woman. Um, and then basically I got into the track Horace Wimp. Horace Wimp, the most underrated ELO song from the Discovery album. God, God, awesome cover that has. But yeah, love Horace Wimp. Um, so yeah, ELO, now one of my favourite bands. That's just a few. I could probably go on with quite a few more, to be honest. Megadeth, even their one. Uh, anyway, Beza 7023. Do you listen to any symphonic metal or power metal? Which bands um, would you say are your favourites in that particular genre? And this is going to be the last question. I listen to far more power metal than symphonic metal. I think the only symphonic metal band I actually know, or listen to certainly, is Nightwish. Don't really know if it, and to us, I only know one night which I'm that Century Chap, which I haven't listened to for God knows how long. I should, yeah, I should, I should probably listen to that again, to be honest. Um, power metal wise, I, I do like power metal. Halloween, probably my favourite power metal band, whose album this year, I love Straight Out of Hell. I also like Iron Savior, I always talk about them. Great, um, you know, little known one. Hammerfall, Firewind, even Dragon Force, um, you know. They're alright. Off the top of my head, there's, there's quite a few more, but I can't particularly... Um, no, I can't particularly think of any more. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for part two of my Q&A. Um, I don't know how many more parts there's going to be. Maybe one more, maybe two more. I think possibly two more this way. This is going to be a long Q&A. So this has been The Album Man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and as usual. Long live rock and roll.